Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video I'm going to try to demystify completion handlers in Swift. We'll be looking at an asynchronous function and the need to create a completion handler when we try to fetch data from a service that uses an asynchronous method. Along the way we'll also look at the background and main threads and how we can let our users know that our app is busy fetching data. If you enjoy this video, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you ring the bell to get notified when new videos are released. I encourage you to leave a comment below. And if you're so inclined, you can support my work by buying me a coffee. I'll leave a link in the notes below. So if this is what you're interested in, let's get started. I've covered completion handlers in a previous video, and it's one of the most watched videos that I've got. But I know that this is a particularly difficult concept for devs to understand. I discovered this while working with one of my coffee supporters who needed me to troubleshoot his code. As I was doing this, I came up with a way of explaining the concept, and I hope you enjoy it. I'll leave a link to the previous video in the description below. There's a starter project for this video, so let's take a look at what we have. I can run the app in preview and see that I can type in a stock symbol, like AAPL for Apple, and tap the update button and it goes off and fetches the latest figures for that stock. Sometimes the return is pretty quick, like you saw for Apple. But if I type in OTEX, which is the stock for the company I used to work for, it takes a little bit longer than this time. It still works, but the UI needs some work to let me know if something is happening in the background. There are also several problems with this code, and that's what we want to fix. The objective here is to demystify completion handlers, but we should also try to take care of other issues at the same time. If we look at the code, it's primarily all in content view. The body is a VStack consisting of a text field where we enter the stock symbol, a button where the action initiates the request, and another VStack that will display the stock only if it's not optional. And since it's optional at the start, the VStack isn't displayed. Each of the lines below the title are property views, and that's another view struct that simply produces an H stack where I format a fixed word and present the return double value of the stock value as currency. To do this, I've created an extension on double that uses a number formatter to choose the currency number style and then return the string representation. To retrieve the stock, I've created a simple function with one parameter and it uses a URL session data task to fetch the JSON from the stock endpoint at Lil Software. And that's a great site to get sample data from an API without having to register for an account. With the stock API, I get back a nice JSON object. I've created a model that is quotable and the properties match the keys in that JSON. Name has to be optional because if the stock symbol is not found, the value is null. Back in content view, upon receiving valid data from the request, I use a JSON decoder to decode that stock and assign it to our optional stock property that in turn will refresh the view and since the stock is no longer optional, will display our VStack of values. Now this is not particularly good coding. In fact, I have several issues with it and I'm going to do some things now to improve the code. It won't be perfect in the end. It should be noted, however, that I could do a lot more, but what I want to stick to is the purpose of this video. The first thing I want to do is to move this function into its own file. It is quite possible, if I were to enhance this app, that I may wish to call this function from another view. And besides, it has no business being in a view. The view should be for presentation only, so let me cut it out of here so that I have it on my clipboard. What I'll do now is create a new file and I'll call it service. And I'll create that in our extensions and utilities folder. Inside that file, I'm going to create an enum called service. And inside I'll paste my function, but I'll make it a static function. This produces an error, however, since stock is no longer here. So the natural tendency is to use a return in our function, 
And since this may fail, we may not get a stock. So let's return an optional stock. And then inside that function, we can create a property called stock that is optional. And then in our data task function, assign that value of stock that is decoded to our stock property. And then we can return the stock at the end. All is good, right? Back in Content View, we'll add the static namespace in front of our function so that we can then retrieve that return stock. And I'll assign that to the stock property in Content View that will cause a refresh of the view. Sounds good. Well, let me refresh the preview, and then we'll try to enter the Apple again and tap on Update. Nothing's happening. I don't get an update. Why? My function's returning something. Well, to see what's going on, I'm going to run this in the simulator. But first, I want to set a breakpoint. I'll also want to use the console to inspect the value of the stock when, after it's assigned here in line 19. So in order to do that, I'll need to remove the private access level temporarily from our property. Now in the service class, set a breakpoint at line 12. And this means that our app will stop when the execution reaches this point. Let's run the app now in the simulator. Now, don't worry about these constraints that are showing up here in the console. I'm hoping that this gets fixed in the next release of Xcode. So let's just clear the console for now. Let's enter AAPL once again and tap on Update. As expected, I stop at line 12, and I can tap on the Step Over button to go through the code. On the first tap, I see that stock is set to nil. So you'll be able to now step through the function and see what's happening. As I move through each line, I see I quickly jump from line 18 to line 29, and then on to line 30, which returns the stock, which I think is still nil. Well, now I'm in content view, and I'm at line 19 where I'm about to assign a value to stock that was just returned from our value from our function. Well, let's check. Let me step over once more to make the assignment, and then in the console we can type in PO space stock, and then hit return on our keyboard, and we'll see that stock is indeed still nil. I'll tap the continue program execution button to continue, and now we'll have to check out to see what's going on. Let's remove the breakpoint. Well, the reason is that the URL session dot shared dot data task function is asynchronous. When we call this function passing in our symbol, it goes off and makes the request and our getStockInfo function continues on without waiting for the result. And therefore it returns the current value of stock, which is still nil. So how can we delay this return? How can we solve this? This is where completion handlers get involved. So instead of returning a stock, we're going to execute a function when our task completes that will be passed in from our caller view, which is the content view. If we can pass in a function from content view that looks like this, then once we have our stock, we can execute that function using the retrieve stock as the argument. And the function is created at the call site, but it's executed here inside our function. So let's remove the returns and see how we can add that parameter that will be the function we're going to pass in from the call site content view. We can also remove the optional stock property. After the symbol parameter, we'll add a comma, and then we'll need a name, a label for that parameter. And it's standard to call this completion, as we're going to execute this function once the task is completed. Now the type for completion is a function, and we pass in functions as arguments by way of a closure. So our argument needs to know what is the type or the signature of that closure. Now, if you don't understand what closure syntax is, I recommend that you watch my video on that topic, as I go over that in a great amount of detail. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now the closure has one parameter, which is going to be a stock, and it's not going to be optional this time, 
because we'll only execute this closure after we get our stock from this line here, and it returns nothing. So we'll just use void to represent that. Now we can assign this decoded stock to a constant property called stock within this scope. Now once we have stock, we can execute that function that is our parameter's name, completion. So we just call it just as we would any function. And this one requires the argument that is a stock. Now this gives what might seem like an unexpected error. Well, what the heck does this mean? Escaping closure captures non-escaping parameter completion. Well, since we're calling our completion function within another function, that is this URL session function, it is leaving the scope or escaping the scope of this function. So we need to mark the function itself as being at escaping. Well, that completes our get stock info function for now. Let's return to content view. Now we're getting that error here because our function now is different. So let's just delete it here and we'll come back to it. Let's create a function that we can pass into our new function. We can call the function whatever we want. So I'm going to call mine display stock info. And I know that it will require a parameter that's a stock. Remember, that's going to be called completion back in our, in our function in our service class. It's going to be executed inside our getStockInfo function, and the stock that it will assign to as an argument will be the stock that we get from our data task request. So what we'll want to do then is to assign that argument to the stock that is in this view. Well, we now have a symbol, which is our symbol property, and we have this function, which is the correct type. So inside the button, we can call that surface get stock info function, passing in the symbol and our function. Let's test. And we can do that in preview. Let's pass in AAPL, tap on update. And it works. Let's try OTEX. This works too. Let's try some non-existing one. Let me just type in any random text. Now it takes a while, but eventually we're told that it is an unknown stock. Now I really like this way of dealing with completion handlers because in my mind it's clear what's going on. Seldom know would you see this, though I must admit I like how this reads. So let's comment this out and recreate this same function. But this time, because completion is a train enclosure, in Xcode I can press enter on the train enclosure and it will automatically convert it to a Swift train enclosure syntax. And this provides a placeholder view that says that the closure expects a stock that we can assign to a variable that we name stock, and then in the body, we can simply place the body of our display stock info function. There's no real need to create that function separately. Let's test again to make sure everything is okay. Yeah, that's looking pretty good, but there are still some issues. As I said, it's all looking pretty good and it works really well, but eventually if you carry on with this, your app might fail. Why? Well, when you call the getStockInfo function in the data task function, it's executed on the background thread. And when we execute the completion handler, it is still on that background thread, which is going to be updating our UI, and that's never a good idea. I've created an extension to dispatch queue that will simply print out the label of the current queue along with the current thread. I also have another utility file called log that has a couple of static functions. One that calls that log function and another one that will simply print out the location where I am in a particular file. So I can use this then back in content view by printing out the location and the queue information just before we assign the stock value. 
Now remember this is being executed inside the getInfo function. Let me run and test this in the simulator because I want to see what gets printed on the console. Let's fetch the Apple stock. And we see in the console that we are indeed running on the background thread. So we'll need to update the UI on the main queue. And we can do that by wrapping our argument to the stock in a dispatch queue.main.async. And let's log the queue where we are here so that we can see what's happening on the console. Let's test once more. Perfect. We're now executing and updating our UI on the main thread. Why don't we also just set the symbol to an empty string once we have executed the completion here. Now, once we get a response, we can clear the text field. Good. Well, this is functional, but there's something else that's really bugging me here. When I tap the button, there's nothing stopping me from tapping the button more than once. And on a slow internet connection, there might be some delay going on here, so we should disable that button until we get a result back. So I'm going to create a state property that will know when we're fetching the data. I'll call it is fetching, and I'm going to set it to false initially. And then as soon as I tap the button, I'll set is fetching to true. And then in the closure, once we've assigned a value to our stock, I'll set it back to false. Now I can attach a modifier to the V stack that sets the UI as disabled based on that property. Let's test once more. We can do this in the preview now as I don't need to see the console. Each time I tap the Get Update button, the button and the text will get disabled until the fetch is completed. Well, we can do even better than this. Let's add a visual clue by adding a progress view whenever the task is executing. As the first item in the V stack, create a progress view that is conditional on the is fetching property. So it's a progress view. And the progress view style is a circular progress view style. Let's test now. Well, this is great. The UI is disabled and an activity view spinner is displayed, letting us know that something is going on. Now there's one last thing. When we fetch a new stock, I don't want to show this previous stock. So I can fix that by setting the stock back to nil when I start the fetch, and that will result in the view not displaying since it's only displayed when the stock is not nil. And then once we get a return from fetch, the stock is assigned, and we'll see the displayed content. Well, that's a wrap. I hope that I've helped you to demystify the completion handler and given you a few more things to think about when dealing with asynchronous function calls.